I'd like to thank you guys for your responses, your private messages to me when I decided to go a little weird the other night. Thought I might dive in really deep now. Truth is stranger than fiction. You're watching it all on TV. If you watch Stranger Things, I, I can't even watch that, but the Spirit speaks to me with strange, mysterious things. I thought I'm just going to jump in and share it because I wasn't sharing these things before because as I started to share them, I was getting shadow banned. I just thought, what the hell? It's time. <laughs> time to join the dots. And it's actually... Um, it's actually somebody, one of you, that reached out to me and said, teach more. I don't see myself as a teacher. I see us all as students of the universe. We're learning from creator now, who is within us. And um, it's the unlearning that's really hard. So this might be a long one. I've decided to go to the Wellness Centre late today. Um, this was brewing up within my belly since yesterday evening. And I want to show you that we're in a soul trap Good morning. We're in a soul trap. And how can you get out of the soul trap? Well, history keeps repeating. And that's what I hope to show you today. Hello, lovelies. Thank you for saying hi. So I'm just going to calm my own frequency to speak about these things. It'll be a bit clunky because I will turn the camera around and show you some things on my laptop. I want you to dig in. You are your own teacher operate from your highest self that is your soul self the body is just the avatar most people are caught up in that this is me this isn't you this is a stone house this is the element that is separate to but connected like an anchor like a stone uh, it is a stone actually to the three things that I spoke to you about yesterday now some of you um, are still religious and I respect that. Please know my heart that this conversation isn't to offend anybody's cultural beliefs. We all have our own belief systems. They come from our ancestors. But I just want to show you the patterns that are looping around and around and around and why spirit called me to completely and utterly step out of religion completely and utterly step out of that priest line that's ruling and I'm hoping to show you the dots of how it's joined governmentally as well and then the penny might drop so here we go I'm talking to you about ancient aliens yes I am you know you know I'm an Enoch fan he talks to me in heavenly realms ascended masters will come into you if you hit the right frequency they did to Christ some of you that aren't religious that's great too and you might get offended at how I talk about Yeshua sometimes I speak using Bible verses yes I do I have no shame in this because that's how spirit started speaking to me it wasn't through reading a book though it was internally he spoke these verses in my head still does and they're the ones that I share with you and then it I tried to explain to somebody the other day that I was chatting with, most of us look to education to learn. I don't. I try to work in reverse. I listen, I pull it in, and then I go and study. So all of what I'm sharing with you today, uh, this deep, deep stuff, is I've heard it that way. And so if this resonates with you, it is a frequency. I bless you. I hate the word bless even. Bless is be less in this spelling soul trap that they've got us in English is spelling and so I have set the intentions that any words that I use just out of sheer habit uh, will not be used as a curse so I want you all to fall into abundance today um, okay so Enki and Lil Amun Ra and Isis we have these four ancient gods of Mesopotamia I want to talk to you about ancient gods Dagon. I want to talk to you about Baal. We're going to go deep today. I'm going to show you the cycles of the soul trap. And I expect you to do your own research. If anyone would like to discuss these things on a video chat, uh, one of you reached out to me and said, could we do a meetup? If you're interested in doing that, I'd be um, open to considering that for once a month, maybe for an hour, and we can share what we're learning.
Okay, so Mesopotamian gods, Enki, Enlil, Amon-Ra. Amon-Ra, mm, okay, Amon is when we say Amen. And this is what I want to show you, the Saturnalia trap of all of these Abrahamic uh, religious beliefs. Uh, the Levitical priests, yeah, this is why I study in Hebrew. I'm, I don't speak the fluency. I dive into each little word and the etymology of the word. I also dive into Sanskrit because you will find that they are closely related. And please know that your Latin and your English have all bounced out of Sanskrit. If you know that, you can backpedal and see where the priest system uh, has been sitting. And I, I'm hoping to show you that all religion births out of this um, Mesopotamian gods, ancient aliens. And this is what Enoch's talking about. They're the watches. Now ask yourself why you wear a watch. Why is it even called a watch? And who set us in this time frame? Well, the watch is an absolute link to showing you the truth in this planetary clock where we are trapped. Our souls are trapped currently until we lift our high our vibration to a higher state and are able to ascend. That's what Christ came to show us. That's what um, all the missing ancient texts are trying to show you. You can join the dots. You'll find aspects of it in the Bible, but the Bible has been an, uh, manipulated and changed. It even tells you that. So that's why that book for me can go out. I know that might offend some of you. I'll just use the bits that resonate with truth, with love, with light, because there's so much in that book that has oppressed, murdered, raped, taken land, and uh, I'll, I'll talk into that. And it's the same thing happening over and over again with these ancient gods or ancient aliens. They're the watchers, and the watchers are fallen archangels that, manipulated the DNA. I would say we're the offspring of incredibly manipulated DNA. So we're actually hybrids. We're not this original form that God speaks about. And yet I believe that we can get to that because of the whole essence of the first will be last and the last will be first. So Isis, I want you to just meditate on the word Isis. Isis, an ancient goddess, uh, Egyptian goddess. And know that Atlantean knowledge fell. You can read the um, tablet, Emerald Tablets, the Books of Thoth. You can dive into that if you desire to. I try to digest and read everything. But these ancient aliens know that most of us are busy or lazy. Yeah, you just want to be spoon fed. You don't want to dig in yourself. You don't want to ask Creator God for the deep, mysterious things. Because that takes sitting still. It takes turning off. Um, your teachings and, and turning off ego because our belief systems, remember, run our emotions. Our belief systems are what uh, enable us to manifest and our belief systems are also our trappings. So are we creating this cycle for the ancient aliens? That's the question that I have for you today for the watchers. Is there time up or are we perpetuating it? Was there time up long ago and we're still perpetuating it because of our emotional attachment to our belief systems? So Atlantis fell and all of this knowledge went to Egypt, right? So Egypt has been ruled by good and evil. It's the duality that you're seeing in every plane. I'd like you to ponder ancient mystics like Moses, Joseph, uh, who else? Daniel and all his friends. They were taken in, uh, Daniel and his friends were taken into the Babylonian system, right? This is Mesop Mesopotamian uh, system. It's ruled by ancient gods. These were watchers, right? But if you, if you step into the knowledge of creator above these ones that are presenting as religion, medicine, education, science, um, space travel. This is all the things that the watchers were teaching and still are because um, I believe they're shapeshifters. Okay, I'm going to turn this around. I might say some things that are really shocking. If it's too much for you, um, park it and come back to it after a prayer or two. And I'm going to start with the god Dagon and get ready. I'll turn my camera around clunkily and let's see if you can follow. I always have to remember how to do this. 
Okay, Dagon. So everything, as I mentioned the other day, everything in movies and popular culture uh, is, doesn't come from imagination. It actually is truth. So this is your ancient god Dagon. You can please Google this because I'm going to probably work quickly here with limited timing. So the ancient god Dagon is shown as a sea, it's a fish, yeah, it's a fish. We've just come out of the the um, season of Pisces, right? So of course a fish would be ruling. So then we get to the Pope and he is one head of the church. The church has two heads and you will see this is the ancient god Dagon and this is the modern god Dagon uh, shape-shifting. And you'll see it in uh, all of these ancient gods will show you who they are because they're holding the pine cone, which is, I believe, a symbol of your pineal gland. They're holding the wisdom keys. They're holding the knowledge. They're holding the rod. You'll see them with the rod. You'll see them uh, with a cross. You'll always see them with a cross. You'll see the hand symbols. You'll see um, they're showing you the mystical symbols without saying it. Okay, so um, this system... This Babylonian system is, is holding the wisdom keys currently. But it's the same as back in uh, ancient Persia, where the ancient gods were holding the pine cone. I'll, I'd like to click on that one, but I don't want to mess up what I'm showing you. Okay, so here we go. Here's the um, Persian gods, ancient Mesopotamia. I want you to zoom into the lizard-like faces and the beaks and things, the wings. This is what I would call the watches. Um, please do your own research. If you need keywords, I'm more than happy to um, message you on any of my studyings in this. This is all I do. I'm addicted to studying this stuff. Um, and I hope it brings you some peace and freedom. You see their wings. Um, you, you can do your research and it will say it was the god of the black-haired beings, which I find very interesting because the ancient Hebrews were obviously the black ones. You see the pine cone there at the Vatican. While I've been there, I anointed that with my balm. Uh, yeah, ancient gods of Mesopotamia. Okay, so then we jump forward. Oh, there's the Vatican. I just wanted to reiterate that. They're showing you that they're holding the wisdom keys. Please notice that the pine cone is closed, not open. And there is no religion that's um, missed this beat. This, that's what Spirit's shown me, that every religion has had the wisdom keys, but used it to manipulate and control humanity, which is us, the hybrids. Okay, so here we go. Look at, um, look at this symbol. I've got to say this correctly. Now it's um, Zoro, Zoroastrianism, which I believe was the first religion that came out of the watches. Now, no, no, it's the oldest monotheistic religion in the world. Now, it's really, in, Freddie Mercury was into this, interestingly, but you'll see that they had chariots, wings, big beards, um, they do all kinds of rituals. But the thing that I would like you to observe is that these fellas um, from ancient Persia and Iran, yeah, notice all the wars been happening in Iran. Um, they used to worship with fire. Fire is angelic, right? Fire is a vibration, uh, a heavenly vibration, but they knew that. They uh, pretty much invented things like um, surgery, medicine, education, all these systematic um, Levitical things. So that's one thing I would like to show you and please research that yourself. Please notice that they wear little hats because that's another little telltale sign. Little hats are passed on, on and on through the male line. Okay, then we get to the Anunnaki. Now, truth is stranger than fi fiction. Please don't tune out because I say these words. I want you to Google what Anunnaki means and break down the words and notice that the Anunnaki astronaut gods have been working in every religious system. And you'll see the symbols that often carry little handbags and you'll see 
in the ancient stone carvings. It's not that clear on my phone, but if any of you want um, to Google this, feel free. So you get to things like here is Isis, right? So were the Anunnaki responsible for the mingling of DNA in order to make another strain of humans starting at Adam and Eve? I believe so. Uh, were there humans on earth before Adam and Eve? Yes, there were. That's why you've got two Genesis um, creation stories, one in Genesis 1 and one in Genesis 2, because Creator God forces them to tell you the truth. Black magic cannot stick unless they t show you their hand. They've got to hand you um, their their hidden hand, basically, so that they escape, what would I say, karmic consequences and they just say, oh, well, we showed them and they're just too stupid. And maybe we are because we were very low vibrational. So many of you may not know that um, we think, you know, even those that have grown up in the church like I did, and I left the church because I saw the hypocrisy, but later on spirit brought me back in and showed me things and then told me to leave again. So that was a rather confusing journey for me. Many of you, when we look at how England has been conquering the world, many of you don't know that the region of England is called New Rome. So I'd like you to look at old maps because the Jesuits have changed the map. So the Roman Empire was actually much bigger than what we're presented to with Italy. And Australia would be included in that today because we still pay taxes to that empire. So that's one thing I wanted to point out to you. And I also wanted to talk to you a little bit later about how the Queen is a Druid and uh, the similarities between Christianity and um the Hebrew, the Hebrew thing and Druidism and Druidism is actually paganism. So the, the actual rituals and the names of the gods might have shifted and changed slightly, but they still have the same frequency. And it's all about frequency with a name. So um, this came up to me. One of my good friends sent me something about Beltane last night. And the 1st of May is the celebration of Beltane and she said does Beltane link to Bell because I've been talking to her about the god Bell a lot and I'm like yep it does and I quickly pulled it up the information and showed her it's when the gates are open when the cosmological gates are open that's when the veil is thin so okay you get to the bloodline of um of these ones ruling and there's even been children doing studies on this in that all of these rulers of our current system worldwide, they're all related. So like this might blow your mind. Some of you might know this, drop me a comment or a love heart if you do. But King Charles will tell you himself that he's a descendant of Dracula, which is from Transylvania, which, which links into Romania and Hungary, that region of Eastern Europe. And if you check the old maps, you might find Tartaria. So how interesting that our creator is allowing these ones to rule us for a time. This is the matrix trapping. Now, please know that matrix breaks down to the frequencies of ma, which ma means bitterness. I spoke into bitterness yesterday. I spoke into ma being the ocean on other videos that I've done, the salty ocean has us trapped for now, but there are oceans below the oceans. But back to Mesopotamia. Okay, we've got your Tower of Babel story, and I truly believe this is why I needed to go to the, through the church system in order to understand these things and break them down clearly for you guys. So the Tower of Babel links to Nimrod, who found the ancient tablets uh, or, you know, the emerald tablets and manipulated DNA again. So after the flood, this all started again. And you might know the story, you may know, not know the story, but the ancient Tower of Babel was in the middle of the earth, which I think links to inner earth and some sellouts there. I uh, won't go into the religious key keepers there because, yeah, it does get offensive for people. I'm speaking against belief systems here. But he made himself a giant again. Um, took all the magic tricks back again, became the wisdom keeper and started ruling again. So when you get to Nimrod, 
Interestingly, you'll get to things like Gilgamesh, um, Hillary Clinton, America holding the Gilgamesh stuff, amazing. And we get into the prophecies of Daniel chapter 2, which I really believe in, but I believe they've been misrepresented to humanity for the last bit anyway. We know that um, Persia ruled here at the head of gold, right? So I've been talking to you about Persia, Mesopotamia, Iran. It's all one region. And I believe they ruled the whole earth back then. Um, earth was actually joined at one point, And this is where the ancient watchers were ruling and manipulating the DNA of people. When you get to the story of Adam and Eve, you've got Cain and Abel. You've got Adam being Atom. You've got Eve being the energy. Um, Cain then kills his brother out of jealousy. Creator God marks him with a cross. And um, you can't, if you track Cain's bloodline, you'll get to Canaanites. Well, all of these um, monotheistic worshippers were Canaanites. Um, they came from the land Canaan. Uh, break the word down with etymology to Kabbal, Cannibal, Kabbalah, ancient mystical teachings of Hebrew stuff. And who's still ruling the world? Well, Christ called them the synagogue of Satan. And I make no apologies for saying that because you'll see that they're not the ancient Hebrews. It's just that the wisdom keys have been stolen. So prophetically speaking, this is what the prophet Daniel spoke about. The second ruling was Medo. Persia, Babylon's up here ruling the earth, which I think is Atlantis and Egypt at one point, holding the wisdom keys then. Then we come down to Greece, and that did happen, Greece. And see this picture as the body of earth for now, or at least the earth that's enclosed. We're enclosed in a part of earth. There's, earth is a plane, actually. It's not a ball. Um, ball is just another word for Baal, and Baal is holding those ten pegs. These rulers worship Baal. Then we get to the legs and their iron. So Rome was ruling. This is where the Catholic Church started um, indoctrinating the nations. And then we get down to iron and clay, which is the feet. Now we're right in the tip of the toes, surely, because the UN, I believe, is the toes of the feet. And they're all, yep, they're all related. They're all linked into shape-shifting Um and these giants are now smaller because they know we're onto it. I want you to observe the days of the week um, named after these gods. And I want to bring to your attention the sabbatical or the Sabbath, uh, the Saturday, Saturnalia, um, hot water day there. So interesting. Washing day. And is Saturn ruling this realm? Yeah, these guys, they all worship um, Saturn. There's Saturnalians. It's a, it's um, it's the black sun, and you can look into that. This is the Beltane that I mentioned, and um, worshipped with fire. They dance around fire and a maypole and stuff. It's all about the equinox. It's all about when the gates are open. Okay, so Beltane, another word for Bel Baal. You can read a book um, out of the ancient Apocrypha taken out by the Roman Church called, um, uh, what's it called now? Let me think. Uh, it's something in the dragon. I'll, I'll pop it in my uh, comments below. I've just got a brain fart. Um, it's the dragon. So we think that dragons are mythical creatures. They're not. Dragons are real. They're, I believe they're seraphim angels. Christ said that he came as a worm. And it, when you type in worm, it's been misspelt uh, within the your black-covered Bible that you might be reading in the 66 canon. They do that on purpose because the books have been manipulated by Masons. Masons being Ma, Ma being bitter and Son, Son of or Sonics being frequencies. So I'd like you to just dive into that. I'm not anti any of it. I'm sitting above judgment for all of it. I believe it all had to happen. And it's also that we can learn the lesson of raising our frequency. But Saturnalia links straight to Christmas. This is where Saturnalia Festival is um, celebrated and it is a day of Nimrod. Um, sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but all of these festivals or these feasts or these holiday, holy, 
Holly being holy, yeah, holiday, holly being the wand, the stick, the, the magic stick that's lifted up to blind you, um, lifted up <laughs> to keep you entrapped in Saturnalia thinking. It's all linked in. So too is Pan, yeah, Pan being the god, and you can see the manipulation of DNA. Yeah, you think these things are mythical. I've actually met them in the spirit realm. Um, interrupted sacrifices etc with some of my land reclamation work but these uh, beings are real um, and they're still ruling some of them have hooves some of them have horns and I'm telling you all the stuff in the movies you think that it's um, make-believe but it's not it's all coming from something we're not that clever guys to make this shit up so now to your ancient aliens like they carry the little box and I want to just have you observed that nothing new under the sun? This is what Solomon has shown us. You look at the symbols for NASA. Look at the symbols for all of it. Look at the suits for all of it. I want to show you in Hebrew. Because if you want to know what they're teaching, you need to study what they're studying. That's where I have no fear of darkness. So you study what NASA means. And it's... Um, and. KGV, oh my gosh, the worst version of your Bible ever. Please just get rid of it, throw it out. Um, Nasa means to beguile, deceive. It means to be beguiled. It means, um, yeah, <laughs> it's pretty clear, guys. Like, it's all there. They're showing you the hand. And then we get to this serpent or dragon. There's no difference between a serpent or dragon, but they're all types of entities. But can you not see that the dragons and the serpents have been ruling humanity as we know it anyway, since day dot. And so another word for dragon or serpent is Naga. And in my husband's ancient line, the Nagas were ruling. Now, are all Nagas bad? I don't believe so. The book of Enoch says that 10% of the watchers cross to the light. So that's where I'm hopeful for every being. Um, in order to teach humanity herbs and healing processes. And that's why I lean into Eastern teachings, even though I know that the rulers have all gone to the high place, which means that they've sacrificed to these ancient alien Nagas. But there's 10% that cross to the light to teach Noah and his family good things, the mysteries, the wisdom keepers. And I believe that if it happened then, it'll happen now too. There might be 10% that you're judging, that are ruling, that might just cross to the light and help us get out of this Saturnalia matrix. So um, I want to talk into, back to Dagon, backpedaling now. Dagon links to Dogon. Your vowels don't count. It's the frequency of the word that counts. So Dogon, please go back to the African heritage of the Dogon tribe. The Dogon people and then the Philistines link straight into the giants. They're still very tall people. They have knowledge beyond human wisdom. They know about things like the stars, for example. They know about astral travel. They know about ancient aliens. They were taught this by these watchers. And a symbol, interestingly, for Dogon is this fish symbol. So when Christ is saying to us, um, you know, What's good is evil and what's evil is good. Uh, it's crazy how mixed up it is. Now, who pushed down the Dogon temple? It was Samson. And Samson actually comes from the tribe of Dan. Now, Lundan. <laughs> Lundan. So we've still got, it's really interesting to me how um, so much has been covered up. I hope this is helpful. Um, I'll turn my camera around now because there's quite a few of you on. Say hi. You've all got the ability to study now. You've all got the ability to go inward. The God spark is within you, even though we're trapped in lower vibration body. But I'd like you to know that the Aryan line, the Aryan line comes from this Mesopotamian line. And didn't all of India worship them as gods? You know, if you can start to see the patterns, you'll see that it's the same shit happening over and over and over again. Our elite call themselves gods. They put people up um, on pedestals. They give them golden statues on awards nights, etc. And they're teaching the same knowledge, using the same symbols, the same 
frequencies, the same things where they want you to think that they're above you. But are they? Or are we all equal now because the, it's been activated within us? So the, um, the T-shaped cross, remember I said to you once ages ago, whatever you put a T into blocks the energy. This is the symbol that you need to look for. This T is blocking. That is the symbol that's used through all of these things to block their energy. Um, it's fascinating to me, all of this stuff. It's Anunnaki stuff, which is the snake line or the dragon line or whatever you want to call them, the watcher line. It's why we wear watches. I want you to step out of time. You're no longer bound by time. You are an eternal spirit having an earthly experience. They just want you to think that you're trapped. And how do we escape that matrix? It's by escaping the ego, escaping the system within us that's holding us trapped. All of these things are strange, I know, but we're here to have a mystical experience. So jump out of the cycle of time. Spirit said it like this to me, you are no longer bound by time space or matter right there ancient aliens all have access to the waters now heaven is water below is water too there is water below the oceans uh, do they know something that we don't on how to get out of this matrix i think so there's land beyond the land so when they start saying to you that there's not enough land that's the biggest lie ever they just reset every hundred years or so don't let it happen this time. Let consciousness smash it down. You're not ruled by ancient aliens anymore. As crazy as this sounds, the elite want you to think that you're trapped. Do not give them your power. The whole thing about idolatry is that you're so powerful that whatever you give your attention magnifies that thing. That's one thing in the Torah that I will absolutely say is truth. Don't have any idols of any shape, fashion or form. Look, those movie stars call themselves idols on purpose. Don't give them your pure attention because you're elevating them. Nothing is as it seems. Uh, we could talk so much weirder into this, and I would like to if this interests you. Uh, but I thought I'd just test the waters and see your reaction. So please drop me a comment if you're ready to hear more of this stuff. If you're interested in having a, a Zoom chat or a Google chat together as a, cl a closed group so that you can ask questions without feeling embarrassed um, because shame is such a low vibration. We're all unlearning together. And if I've offended you in anything I've said today, please forgive me. It's not my intention to offend. I just feel it's time to unlock the matrix with the keys that the creator has put within me. I love you. Take care. Have a beautiful day.